lines. Lines that have reduced friction on the water. When I talk about friction on the water, whenever you're sitting there still water nymphing, you go out like this, and when you sit, you hear this. Okay? Great sound because everybody knows, oh, you either got one or you missed it. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what they're doing out there, okay? I came across two different lines in the last couple years that now I'm convinced help me because with still water nymphing, you have approximately about a second to be able to react. Because as soon as the fish puts that midge in its mouth, it's going to spit it out once it figures out that it's not real. They're not going to hang on to it. So your job is to move line as quickly as possible. Moving line as quickly as possible, it may be because of milliseconds, but the ability to be able to move it, you want that reduced friction. I found two lines. Airflow puts out a line called Sixth Sense. Typically, with most lines on the market, there is anywhere between 8 to 15 percent stretch in a line. And I'll have examples up here that you can test it a little bit later. But if, what I'd like you to do is just go ahead and just pull it. I'm sorry. Feel the stretch? Airflow in its six cents line has two percent stretch. Okay? Less stretch, faster contact to the fly, faster contact in the water. Guess what? Your reaction time just went down. So what I was before I was about 80% on my hook ratio. Guess what? With six cents it went up to 95 just because that millisecond of time allowed me a little bit quicker reaction time, whether I was ready or not, no stretch made a difference. You hear about spectrum line, you hear about this in the conventional fishing industry. Same stuff. That's what's in the core of an airflow line. Okay? The other line that I came across, and Scientific Anger was nice enough to let me do some test studies with it, but they were, everybody's familiar with shark fin line, or shark skin line. $100 line, really expensive line, great line, everybody hates the noise. <coughs> if, you, if you don't man up, you've got to put your tape on so that way you don't get uh, cuts because you're stripping through it all the rest of the way. Well, i got news for you. Scientific Anger came out with what they call a textured line. Okay? It's not as abrasive, not as loud, but I'll tell you what, when I lay that thing out on the water and I go to sit on the fish, you don't hear it anymore. It's silent. So what does that tell you? I have reduced free friction on the water. So it's doing the same thing for me. Now, I got two different lines. What do I use them for? My shallow stuff, I use the scientific angler texture line. Why? Because I'm not moving as much water through the water column. Remember, I'm fishing that 1 to 10 feet. 10 to 20 feet, I have the airflow line on because I'm trying to move a lot of line in a very short period of time, and that's going to be my advantage is being able to move line quicker and with that little amount of stretch. When both of those companies come together and they make a no stretch textured line, that's the one I'm going to end up buying. Okay? Now, also, visible color you can see. Doesn't matter whether it's bright yellow, bright green, uh, clear intermediate, floating line, this and that. No, it doesn't, but make sure that it's a line that you can see. And you're going to see a little bit more of the reason why I tell you that as far as something you can see on the water. Everybody on a lake thinks that they're, when you throw something out on the water, nothing happens. It just sits there. But i got news for you. There's currents. There's wind. There's all kinds of things that make a line do all kinds of weird stuff in the water. And if you see it different, then you're going to be able to fish something different. And when I get into a little more into the technique itself, you'll understand why but get a color that you can see, okay? We talked about fluorocarbon line. For still water nymphing, I use a 4X tippet or a .007 diameter line. I don't care what brand it is, as long as it mics out to .007. What I have found out with that line, and you're gonna hear it all, well, how come he doesn't use a 5X when it gets when the truck get picky? I don't fish for those fish, I fish for suicidal fish. <laughs> I fish for fish that eat, okay? I'm going to have to go down to a smaller tippet just to get bit. No fun for me. Let's, let's go find something that's going to eat because then i got to change it up too much. That's all I use is 4X tippet, 
0.007 diameter line. I found out in studies inside of a, inside the pool that when attached to midges and the ascent rate of what it does and the diameter of what it does, it floats down to a rate that's more realistic than I've seen with others. If it's too thick, it goes down too slow. If it's too thin, it goes down too fast. And that's the reason for the 0 0.007 model. Okay? We talk about foam indicators and yarn indicators. Great. Foam and yarn. Awesome, and we're in your ability. Now, sitting you know, way in the back, you're going, man, I see that little guy like that. Foam <coughs> indicator's great. I can see it from miles and miles away. Good and bad points about both. If it's an eyesight thing you're looking at, and something you want to be able to take strikes, I'll tell you to use yarn. But you're going to have to maintain it and put maintenance to it. Typically, with both yarn indicators, you have to put something on it to treat it to make it float, because polyurethane absorbs water once it hits the water. Okay? On a windy day, <coughs> yarn indicators are, wind are not wind resistant. So casting into the wind or casting behind you, it can help you, hurt you, but it's a pain in the butt because it does hinder your ability to have a good cast. Okay? Foam indicators, <coughs> brown, various colors, that way you can see. Okay? Nice part about these, no maintenance at all. Put on your line. Put a toothpick through it, send it out, good to go. Do I have to worry about maintaining it at all? No. Do I have to worry about having to do anything to it because it's sinking? The only hard part about it is your eyesight and being able to see it. Okay, fish get conditioned. I don't care where it is, if still water nymphing is taking place and it's as big as it is now, fish get conditioned to see that. They go, oh wow, when I see that orange thing up there, oh, when I decide to eat something and I go in the hamburger line and I get bit, Oh man, I go for an e-ticket ride at Disneyland. Sometimes they let those guys come back, sometimes I don't see them come back. Fish get conditioned to these things, believe me. White is probably the hardest color to see, so it makes me concentrate the most. I'm partially ADD, so I need that. <laughs> okay? But that's the whole idea is color you can see. Okay? What about size? Size? I use half inch. So go as small as you can, but not so small that the thing starts to sink down in the water too. Half inch is what I use though. And I'm suspending two, sometimes three flights. Okay, we're gonna talk about entomology. We're gonna talk about my recipe for success. How to fish the technique and tips for success. Entomology wise, the lifespan of a coronamid, or tip there is the technical or scientific name for it. Starts off with a lava, it goes to a, per, a pupa, uh, goes through an emergence, and then goes to an adult <laughs> stage. Okay? How long does this process take place? About three years. Okay? Larvas. Once the eggs are laid, it's about anywhere between two and three years where they sit on the bottom of the lake. Okay? Next. That's what they look like. What these guys do, they'll sit anywhere between two and four inches off the bottom of the pond bottom of a lake. They're in the mud, and coronamids take mud in order to, or to, for them to sustain their lives. That's the environment that they like, so if it's a mud lake situation, works great. What these guys do is they pop their heads out. They do this. They eat, they go back down. They come back up, do this, go back down. Now, they start getting hungry and they start finding there's no nutrients and all the rest. That's when they pop their heads out, the whole body two to four inches. They go floating along in a vertical position, down as a drift, bury themselves back down, and do that same process. And that goes on for two to three years. If you really look at some of the patterns of the way midge fishing works and the documents that I've kept, it stands true because once that lifestyle takes place, those same midges are coming across to me every two to three years. This worked last year, and now worked this year, the reason being it's a different generation of midges. Every about three years, as far as the documents that I've held, I keep facts of what I do, where I was, what I fished, how I fished, all, all the rest, and those colors are coming back again about every three. Okay? So that's a larva stage. Now, with the larva stage, and I'm gonna pass this out a little bit later, I, just, I couldn't get a camera uh, that would give me the macros on it, but I do have down on the bottom here 
what represents as a blood binge. Okay? Some of you who are at the timetable saw that and saw what it looked like. Um, this represents what this is with the segmentation, everything else. I will pass this around once I get done with this portion of it so everybody can see what's going on with it. Okay? Next one. We get to the pupa stage. Okay? There's a graduation between this because between the larva and the full adult pupa stage, there is a stage that we detected underneath the water. And that's purely because I pump the stomachs of fish. I want to find out what they're eating. Okay? Between those two cycles, what ends up happening is that when it goes through transformation into this pupa, pupa section, what ends up happening is the hemoglobin and transfer of blood throughout the blood midge itself starts to have veins right at the segmentation of the ribs. That's how the tiger midge got invented, was because of that. Okay? So it's a midge of this shape and proportion, but it has red wire to represent the transfer of hemoglobin through the process of way the midge is going. How long does this process take place? About two to four weeks. Where do they live? Six to maybe 18 inches of water on the bottom of the lake. Okay? Then we get into the full adult where now they create that. Okay. Where now they create their true colors. Okay? Olive, gray, black are probably your three most main colors that you'll see coming across. We did come across one very unique one and that's in Laguna Niguel only, and that's because of the amount of chartreuse tar bait that's from there, but they are chartreuse. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, they are chartreuse. Okay? So you'll find out in here I have a black one, I have a gray one, I have an olive one, and I have a chartreuse one, so you'll be able to see that. Okay? The last section that takes out, and those anywhere between 6 and 24 inches off the bottom of the lake. That's where they survive. Now, what these guys do, they do this. This lasts for about four to six weeks, okay? And that's all they're going to do. That's why it's such an easy meal for trout. Get into the emergence. Now, most people are usually, usually used to seeing emerger patterns. I don't call it an emerger pattern. I call it a, an adult stage of the pupa itself. And what you're going to see is right here, it's a white tuft on it. What those are are gill plates. And what it is is during their metamorphosis to an adult, what ends up happening is now they have to breathe. So that's their way of being able to breathe, and it comes across with a white type of a tuft on the top of the head. Okay? On this palette here, you will see on the very top, and if you need magnifying glasses or the lights turned on, look for the white tuft that's sitting on top of the head, because that's the last stage before these come up to the surface and hatch. That will create an air bubble, which helps the midge. When it's sitting down here, it goes boom, 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 goes to the top of the surface, crawls out of its shuck, life cycle starts all over. This happens within about 20 minutes from the time that it starts at the bottom to get up to the top. Now you're going to see where all the columns start to make a difference as far as what you're using and 